Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our Alpha Awards 2020 Judges live stream. Uh, I'll be your host this evening, Sean Elwood. Uh, great to make your acquaintance if we haven't met already. And uh, we're going to be having a little bit of a chat about Alpha Awards, a um, little bit of a look back very quickly, uh, but more about the process uh, and helping you understand a little bit more about what goes on behind the scenes uh, so that hopefully you can um, you get even more out of the competition in the years to come. Uh, we've never really spoken publicly about what goes on behind the scenes uh, with Alpha Awards, and it's really interesting for us to do, so hopefully it'll be interesting for you to learn a little bit more about. Uh, so I'm going to talk for hopefully about 10 minutes. I'm, I'm a bit of a rambler, but I'll try not to rabbit on too much, and then we're going to work our way through the categories. Uh, we've got, uh, you can see here, uh, to, my, to my left, these are the timings, roughly. So um, I'm going to try and stick to that. Uh, if you really want to tune in for one category, you got to go away. Just make sure you get back for yours. Um, uh, so one other thing I really want to mention, uh, actually, you know what? I'll come back to it at the end of this. So 2020 is our fifth consecutive year of doing Alpha Awards. Uh, that's if you include Alpha Art House, which is our very first year. Uh, but basically, you know, that was Alpha Awards in all but name. Uh, our mission with the competition was always to really re-energize everyone who shoots on Sony Alpha, you know, get everyone really pumped up to uh, get out there, get the camera in their hand and just take great photos. Um, and, you know, we also wanted to build a sense of community. Uh, that's part of why we've always tried to do a big event, bring people in. Of course, really tragic that we couldn't do that this year, but, uh, you know, hopefully giving people the chance to see each other's photography and, and share that is uh, serves that purpose. Um, we really try to focus on doing a lot of that kind of community building because, uh, you know, if you don't have people active and out there and using your gear and, and enjoying using your gear, then uh, it, it doesn't bode well for your future in convincing people to buy more cameras in the future. So uh, we try to uh, do that as a, just out of enlightened self-interest as much as anything. Uh, so uh, I guess... One thing that's really been important from the inception of Alpha Awards was who's going to pick the winners? You know, it's a competition. Somebody has to say what's good. And really, you know, there was a hot minute right at the start uh, where it could have been Sony staff members. You know, obviously everyone's got an opinion about photography, uh, but we, we talked about it and very quickly it became obvious that having Sony staff picking who was a winner wasn't going to work because uh, we, uh, well, for starters, you know, we're not, um, we're not photographers first and foremost, you know, there are lots of photographers at Sony. Um, and, and of course we all have a certain affinity, especially in, in cameras for photography, but you know, we have other things that are our main focus in life and, um, and it didn't seem suitable for us to be picking who wins this big competition. So um, the other problem, of course, is we have strong and obvious conflicts of interest. You know, I'm friends with the guy who manages lenses. If I know that he's uh, trying to promote this lens and they've got two maybe winners and I am it's I could toss flip a coin between them, well, maybe I'm not going to put the extra effort in. Maybe I'm just going to put forward the one that I know he wants to sell. I think we all like to think that we would do the right thing in that situation. But uh, it's never a given, and in the end, why bring it into question? You know, we just decided it makes far more sense to bring in people from outside of the company. And look, in the end, we know a heap of talented photographers. You know, we're not hard up for people who could have a, a really qualified opinion on the photographs that get submitted. For year one, we used all ambassadors, um, and they did a fantastic job. But over time, we increased the number of categories. Uh, we opened out to you know more genres, and so you know we wanted more expertise, people with different focuses, um, and ultimately more specialization. Uh, people who are great at understanding editorial and portraiture probably aren't going to have a, a super keen uh, sense of what makes a great. Uh, creative submission where you're having a collage pastiche of different images. So uh, that was really important for us. And then this year we've added one sort of final twist. You know, previously we had uh, a sort of few of the longer serving ambassadors choose the grand prize winner. Uh, but from 2020, we're actually 
sending all of the finalists off to the World Photography Organization, who uh, convened the Sony World Photography Awards, and they choose the grand prize winner. Uh, Scott Gray this year, the founder and uh, CEO of WPO, uh, chose uh, our grand prize winner. Um, and that, again, just helps us to sort of separate out and make sure that that's really impartial. Um, it's a clear, separate thing, uh, and there's no question about it. Um, Having all those different judges has really, I think, massively enriched Alpha Awards over the years. Having a broader set of voices represented uh, is huge, not just sort of a set of middle-aged white men. Um, that's nice to have just a little bit of uh, a broader view. Uh, and also, you know, I, I really do think different categories call for different things from the judges. Uh, having a really great sense of what makes a good portrait which is very much a about connection, uh, you know, about um, two people. Uh, that is one very kind of finely tuned thing. And then if you take that and you apply it to something like astrophotography, which is really technical, something that's super demanding in terms of how well you understand your gear and your craft, um, there are just completely different things that are important in those two categories. And so having, you know, this much wider breadth of, of expertise and knowledge has been huge for us. So you probably have a sense of this uh, already from just participating, hopefully, if you have participated in the awards. Uh, but um, if, you, if you haven't or you just would like to know a little bit more, here's what goes on sort of over time. So we have a three-month submission period now. Uh, it used to be shorter, but we're, we're trying to expand it out, give people a little bit more time to get there shots in. Sorry about this slide. It actually went to pieces when I uploaded it. So excuse my arrows, they're all over the shop. We actually overlap the judges deliberation a little bit with the submission period. So they can have a bit of a sneak peek as the submissions are coming in. And then uh, from there, we go into our first round. Now, going into the first round, we ask the judges to select a few favorites. So they'll go into that first conversation, generally with a short list of about 10 images. Uh, and then we have however many categories there are, in this case, 11 categories, 11 conversations, where we get in a room with those judges who've been selected, judge or judges. We just talk it through. Uh, we put up each of the images. Uh, we talk about what the judges liked, what they uh, didn't like. Um, obviously, we don't really focus on what they didn't like because those probably won't be on the short list. Uh, but, you know, we have a kind of an open conversation about it. Um, and I'll just quickly see if I can share. Uh, it is. Um, so when you when we look at the back end, what we see there is uh, something like this. So this is for astrophotography. Now we can see how many uh, short lists or nominations each image got. Uh, and that helps us to guide the discussion. You know, we can start from there and say, well, you know, everyone shortlisted this one. And in this case, the only unanimously shortlisted image uh, was the one that took out the top prize. But that's not always the case. And, and in this year, actually, it, it, you know, we had unanimously shortlisted images, which didn't make the top spot. Uh, so we work through that. Uh, and then we go back out to the people who submitted and we uh, invite them uh, the, the people who come on to the second round who have selected, we pick 10, uh, they get invited to, su to submit uh, their images in full resolution. So, you know, we do that initial application in a lower resolution, but then we come back and we say, give us, give us the absolute full res image. Um, uh, so then we bring that back in. We take a look at that image. Um, here's where my arrows go all over the place. I'm sorry. Um, and then it comes down to the hard decisions. So then we bring the judges back in. We say, all right, you've got the full res. You've seen everything. Um, if it's editorial and other categories like that, we get more information and then we pick the top ones. Um, and I've got a little bit for youth as well, but unfortunately I'm really out of time. So I'm going to skip past that. I just, do you just want to quickly talk about submitting in JPEG as opposed to physical printed images or other stuff like that? Um, Submitting in JPEG, partly, look, it's just practical. We get people to submit in JPEG because we can deal with thousands of JPEG images and that's fine. But once you start submitting heavier stuff, it does get a lot tougher. Also, ultimately, you know, I say, I've written here brand truth equals digital images. You know, we're a digital imaging company. The end product of alpha cameras and lenses is a digital image. So it makes sense that that's what you'd submit for the competition. 
Um, and also because we have that multi-round approach, we get to come back and take a closer look. So yeah, there's stuff maybe you'd miss in a lower resolution JPEG, but we get the chance to really dig in there. We were looking across at the appers um, as a sort of point of reference when we started. And they have a lot of great stuff that they do. I think the standard print submissions are great, really levels the playing field. But the having the requirement to submit a print, of course, raises the threshold for entry, right? If you're not if you're relatively new to the hobby, if you don't print a lot, you're a disadvantage there. And so uh, for us, you know, it didn't make sense because we're trying to talk to a huge audience of everyone who uses a Sony camera. It's 10 past eight, and that means it's time to talk about Astro. So I'm going to uh, stop sharing and bring on, uh, judge from our first panel, uh, Andrew J. Clark for Astro. Welcome aboard, Andrew. Hi, Sean, how's it going? Great. Um, Andrew, I'm just going to, before uh, we jump into it, I'm just going to quickly throw to this because um, I, I put it off at the start and I don't want to miss it. Um, our People's Choice Awards are now open. Um, there's going to be a uh, additional prize for whichever uh, photographer is selected. So that's uh, $500 uh, of gear. And then we're also uh, throwing in a great audio pack for whoever comments on the winning image um, so we, we pick at one person at random who commented why the winning image should win. And that person is going to get uh, a really great audio pack. So headphones, speaker. Um, so check it out and, um, yeah, get involved. So Andrew, thank you for your patience while I did that. Um, how are you? Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Doing, doing well. Been, been busy. Uh, good. Glad. Good to hear it. Um, what was your, what was your uh, impression of the the whole experience of judging for Astro? Um, yeah, it was a little bit different. I did landscape last year and I think you sort of hit the nail on the head in your intro with Astro. It, it does have a, a big part of it, a big component of astrophotography is the technical elements um, mm -hmm. and probably more so than some of the other categories. So mm -hmm. the, the conversation that the, the other judges and I had really was intertwined with the, the technique employed for every single image. So it might strike some people looking at the winners, um, you know, both last year and this year that some of them stand out for maybe aesthetic reasons, but you might not be able to see on the surface why a particular image was chosen uh, over another image because it, it does in you know to some regard take a bit more technical knowledge and and deep mm -hmm. knowledge of astro to understand why a particular shot might be favored over something else so yeah a, a different sort of experience from from last year doing landscape but you know challenging in a good way as well yeah yeah i remember uh when we were going through the judging there were the uh there were a couple of um I don't even know what the, the, I'm sure there's a word for it, but sort of those pinwheel images of uh, the light trail. Uh, yeah. Star trails. Yeah. The, the, the star trails um, really revealing my ignorance here. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we can actually see one, which was really shortlisted uh, very prominently. Um, uh, and then, you know, ultimately it, it was the, it was the technical stuff that, um, uh, that became sort of a uh, deciding factor, um, you know, when we'd have a, a bunch of really, really great images and this was definitely one of them and it caught lots, you know, uh, the judges mm. eye very much. Um, uh, but then, you know, when you've got a, a sort of a field of really strong images, often it did become a question of like, yeah, both of these images were really, really strong, but this one they did maybe a little bit more in camera or maybe, you know, like they, um, they connected the foreground to the background, even though it's multiple play, uh, plates, they connected it maybe a little bit more cleanly or, or more truthfully. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this, this image in particular was a great example of that. This was an image which I actually loved um, aesthetically. Mm. I think it's a, it's quite a, not, I, he, I hesitate to say unique, but it was definitely stood out amongst mm. the images submitted this year. It's, it's a different take on star trails. You don't often mm. see things off center like this. The cropping to square is also something you don't see much in Astro. And mm -hmm. for me, just mm -hmm. on an aesthetic level, it worked really, really well. I, yeah. I love this image. The mm -hmm. issue was through the review process and getting raw files and, and higher res JPEGs, it became apparent that this was, composites are fine for the category, but this was a composite mm -hmm. where the foreground was taken like early on in sort of blue mm. hour 
Uh, mm. it's, so it's not truly in a, you know a nighttime photo. And and while mm. that's not against the rules, and it certainly wasn't disqualified for that, um, mm. it does impact you know the judge's thought processes from a technical standpoint if, if it was something which could have been achieved and i, I think it probably could be achieved in mm. the course of your star trails yeah. um overnight i think it makes it a stronger astro image and as mm -hmm. you said when you're when you're splitting hairs between excellent images that that kind of technical consideration does does factor in yeah absolutely I guess we should really um, focus back on to the, uh, the, the winning images and just sort of talk a little bit about each of them. Um, so the, um, the grand prize winner, um, Laurie Winter's image, uh, I mean, what, what, what's your first blush on that one? Um, yeah, this one really stood out when I was going through my initial review uh, as, a, as a really, really strong image. Um, it was the first one to make my shortlist and uh, ultimately was the winner. I was very pleased to to find out that it was also the you know the top rated image from the other two judges as well, which made our process for picking the winner a, a bit easier. Yeah. Um, this really you know uh, achieves everything you want to with an astrophotography. Technically, it's it's really well captured. You know the stars are pin sharp. There's very little aberrations in the stars. Um, color balance and treatment of the Milky Way is, you know, fairly natural. You know, th there is some saturation that's been added there, but it's, you know, uh, when we'll see in some of the other images, a, a fairly natural look. Um, mm -hmm. From a technic technical point of view, the depth of field that was required for this shot was challenging and the photographer's done a really good job there. And then the overarching consideration, it's a, it's a really pleasing aesthetic, aesthetic shot. Um, you know, it's very well coordinated. It's got, got this sense of depth and scale mm -hmm. and layers. And I really like, you know, that there's some sort of story going on here between, you know, the, the rocks in the foreground, the mountain, in the midground, and then the galaxy in, in the mm -hmm. background. There's mm -hmm. this really natural sense of scale there, um, mm -hmm. which, which, you know, stood out, stood out for me. It kind of had everything going for it from my perspective. Mm. Yeah, Laurie's uh, become a bit of a, a yeah, serial offender as well, in a good way. Mm. But, mm. Uh, yeah, really um, consistent performance. Uh, so a, a Wanaka tree image. Um, I, I feel like Wanaka tree images are, you know, a kind of a running joke in um, photography mm. uh, photography competitions, but sometimes you kind of just can't deny the strength of an image. Mm, yeah, e exactly right. And this is a, again, it's a challenging image to capture with the amount of light pollution and, you know, I congratulate the photographer here for getting a, a different take on a very, um, very overshot location. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, like the timing and preparation that goes into planning a shot like this cannot be understated as well. Um, I think here, if, if I was to nitpick, I know this is not the time for nitpick, but it is, they've, they've gone creative with, with the edit in terms of colours. And that's, a, that's both a good thing and, you know, for, for some people they might not like that as much. But over, overall, uh, a very impressive image, both in the technique and, the, and then the overall aesthetic is, you know, it's very impactful, this image. Like it really, mm. it really strikes you with the, you know, silhouetted tree and the, you know, just the coordination that's going on with um, uh, the Milky Way, the tree. And then, and also the, you know, the light reflections in the water sort of that has this verticality to the, to the composition, mm. which is really nice. Mm. I think Laurie's winning image um, and also Douglas's one here, uh, you know, have that in common that they're really beautifully composed uh, in addition to being technically really excellent. Mm. Um, and, and to be fair as well, Tony Law's image here, the uh, uh, this, this one I think really was, was helped over the line by the kind of technical virtuosity of it in some senses. Is that, would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I think that's fair. There's there's um, a lot of challenging components to this um, to this capture, uh, not not just like the framing and composition wise, but the sharpness in in the bridge is is really quite impressive. When you look at the the full raw, we've got um, uh, sorry the uh, the high res full full resolution image. Um, mm. You've got the, a moonrise immediately beneath the Milky Way, 
which is just mm -hmm. a it's an interesting thing again to plan and then to have that work in your composition is uh you know requires planning requires forethought and then the execution from a technical standpoint was quite amazing i remember looking at the roar and, and zooming into the back of the bridge and there's some graffiti there and it is like pin sharp and barely any noise registering <laughs> And yeah. that kind of thing is just, you know, it's it, that is truly difficult to achieve and the photographer has done a great job. Yeah, absolutely. Andrew, uh, I, I feel like we've just barely gotten started, but um, the uh, we probably actually have to wrap it up for Astro. Uh, so um, thank you so much for uh, your time on stream. Um, and now we're going to switch over and have a chat about uh, City Street. So thanks a lot, Andrew. Okay. Thanks so much, Sean. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Bye. All right. Uh, so now we're going to roll on over to the city street uh, category. And uh, joining me for city street, I have uh, Andy Yee. Andy? Hi, Sean. How you doing? Good. Yourself? Very well, thank you. Good, good. Um, uh, so uh, you're one of uh, one of three judges for the city street category, although the only one judge joining us this evening. Um it's a it's an interesting category, I think, uh, because it is sort of uh, a bit of a a bit of a mix, right? It's a bit of a kind of uh, you've got that street sensibility, which is sort of one thing, and then you've also got a bit of cityscape in there. Um, uh, how was your experience doing the judging? Judging this year was was a lot of fun. Like you know, the other two judges are very experienced in this field, in Mick Porter and uh, Tom Ang. So mm -hmm. it was great to collaborate, like in, in terms of like you know finding, uh, you know, sifting through like you know all the all the different styles of of uh, city and street that we all sort of like to try and figure out like you know which images were the strongest uh, for yeah. panel judging. Yeah, it's a very different, uh, a very. I think City Street is always a category where we have a lot of uh, differences of opinion um, in, a, in a constructive way, but uh, everyone's sort of looking for something a little different in, in this category. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And that, that all comes back to like, you know, the judges all have different different styles and different, you know, sort of influences. So I, mm -hmm. I'm influenced a lot with architecture. And then in terms of like, you know, what we ended up with, we ended up with very, I think organic images in terms of like, you know, people and their surroundings. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'll just show, um, I think, cause I think it is interesting. Uh, when you see the, uh, judges view for, uh, there we go. So when you see the judges view for city street, um, it, the amount of overlap uh, we had in the initial shortlist was very, very low. And so it, it did become just a big conversation where we had to really uh, talk it through and, and get everyone's point of view and, and kind of try to come to a consensus. Yeah, and that all comes down to also like you know, looking at not just the compositions, but like you know, getting further into the technical merits of, of each of the images when we actually look for the at the... Uh, at the the raw images or like kind of the, the finished images mm -hmm. yeah um well maybe let's have a bit of a chat through the uh the three uh finalist images um the uh, i'm just trying to recall which of the, which of these were on your short list initially when we went into the the final round none of them were none of them is that true none of them that's true I, had, I went back and had a look at my images, and I shortlisted mm -hmm. twelve images, and yeah, like none of none of these three. That these three were on my longer list. Yeah, but like I was quite happy to like, uh, especially with the image which, which you know won. Mm -hmm. it, it just like you know, in, in terms of everything which we kind of look for in terms of, uh, like it's it's been it looks like it's been organically shot. It doesn't look staged. The composition mm -hmm. and like you know, the subject matter, it just looks really natural. And mm -hmm. I, I always knew that this would be something that we would discuss. And it was just, you know, you know, I, I wanted to discuss other images before we got to this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
do you want to, are there any particular images you want to pull out and have a, have a look at, uh, or. Beyond these three? Well, I mean, if you want to, there's no. Well, I, I, think we, I, think I really we enjoyed these three thing. images. So mm-hmm. David, David was the first image with the meditation. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I just, I just love it. How like, you know, it's just a nice composition. It just looks like, you know, it's, it's just been naturally shot. Yeah. Uh, Alex is the second image with the dog and the lady. Mm-hmm. And that, that was just like, you know, just nice symmetry and nice subject matter, like, you know, composition. Yeah. And the third yep. one with Stephen's image, it just, it, it, it's just a vibrant image in terms of like, you know, just lots of detail and uh, you can see like, you know, you know, it's, it's a fun street image. Mm, hmm. Mm, the um, yeah. Th- this was one where it, it it sort of it had so much going on, and even though I think all of the judges uh, had a few reservations about you know like oh what's going on in the corners or what have you, in the end it it just was carried by sort of the charisma of the the central action. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, what uh, what were the other images that uh, that you sort of were especially um, excited about during the judging? Well, we we had a long discussion about the the Shanghai at night image, which mm-hmm. I think yeah, is I one remember. of my favourite images, mm-hmm. and it it was uh, to me like you know that one stood out, and you know we discussed it at length. It's just um, you know in terms that's my kind of style of photography. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of like you know sort of panel judging, it kind yeah. of like you know you, you've got to match one against the other, and then like you know you've got to really like you know critique, you know, and pull apart like each right. image technically. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it um it definitely becomes a a big a big conversation. Um, uh, wh- I guess what was it about this? Uh, wh- what was it about this one that grabbed you especially? Uh, the use of like you know the light, the, how vibrant like you know the street setting was, and then you know the, the heavy tilt. Like, and I, I know Tom wasn't a fan of like you know sort of the Dutch tilt, but <laughs> yeah, that's it's, I, I like this kind of distortion in terms of like you know sort of you know you can take a regular like in you know, a street shot, but this like you know I thought was like in you know, a shot. Well, we weren't sure if it was staged in or not. Like you know, with the guy off the umbrella, the mm-hmm. the focal length was also a little bit off when we looked at it, like, you know, the largest, larger, you know, scale of the image, but it still yeah. was like, you know, one of my favorite images from this year. Any others that, uh, you sort of enjoyed especially? Well, well, we talked at length about the jogger in the mist because that was one of Tom's favorites. Mm. And th- this is one of those ones where, you know, you, we can, it, it shot vertically in portrait mode. And mm-hmm. Tom liked that, that sort of like, you know, that, that sort of composition. But I kind of like, you know, like that, that image uh, from either like, you know, the, the thumbnail that we look at, like, you know, from, from the judging panel or that right. image in landscape, uh, just because yeah. it just leads more towards like, you know, having, you know, more, more of the, the subject matter and the, the leading line that's going across the, uh, the screen. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms yeah. of, I'm, I can't remember if, like, you know, we, if any of mix images, like, you know, I was really passionate about, but um, it was it was a good, healthy discussion. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I thought so too. Um, yeah, I mean, Mick has such a strong, uh, like, he has a very distinctive uh, style as well, and I think that definitely came through in his selections. Um, you know, a lot of the really raw uh, street images were were his ones that he put forward. Um, Great. Um, well, Andrew, I think we're uh, we're pretty close to time on City Street. It's a bit of a lightning round for uh, for this, but um, thank you so much for jumping on and having a bit of a chew with me. All good. Thank you for having me. Awesome. All right. Chat soon. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so moving on alphabetically, I think next we have the compact category and joining me for compact, uh, I have Pat K recently repatriated. How are you, Pat? 
<laughs> Feeling good oh. being recently repatriated, actually. <laughs> um, they, are you uh, are you still in are you still in quarantine or are you uh, free? I I literally got out this morning from quarantine, so I'm super wow. fresh. Spent the mm-hmm. spent the day in the city. I'm feeling good. So it's, right. it's been a yeah. <laughs> and uh, just back being from up, so uh, from Tokyo, right? Yeah, back from yeah, Tokyo. Right. Had two weeks of quarantine in uh, in Chippendale around there, um, and now I'm all good. Released back Very into good. the world. Uh, got my checks and that, you know. So I'm clean. Have you the camera yet? <laughs> uh, not yet, not yet. No, I was too busy shopping today because I spent the last two weeks like Fair just enough, as you would <laughs> window shopping and you know getting ready for it and all, all, all those kind of things. <laughs> well, now that you're here, why don't we talk about some uh, photographs? Yeah, let's do it. Um, sure. So we had we had two of you in the uh, in the. Uh, judges panel for compact it was you and and stefan um mm-hmm. uh so uh, i think again there was a f- it's it's a funny category this one because uh you know ultimately we don't set a genre at all right we what we said is mm. this is the kind of camera you use not the kind of photography you're doing um but you've got a lot of experience shooting with compact cameras yeah yeah i do um i literally travel with my rx100 well, Mark 7 now, but um, the previous ones, like every single, almost every single day I'm out um, because, you know, the versatility is just so much better than a, a mobile phone. Uh, the quality mm-hmm. is better. It's just like so small and just whack it in your pocket and off you, off you go, right? Ready for anything. It's amazing. I, yeah. I love cameras. I mean, I love compact cameras. <laughs> sure. I love cameras too, but, you know. <laughs> um, well, I think that comes with the territory. Um, right. <laughs> So, uh, so the winning image here, uh, I think this one, um, you know, there was a lot of conversation, but when we came down to it, this one probably was a pretty comfortable, uh, a pretty comfortable seat in the top spot. Would you agree? Uh, yeah. Which was really surprising because the initial like shortlist, um, that we came up with this particular image didn't strike so high and it was only Mm -hmm. after like i don't know if you recall yeah like it was only after um going through a couple of rounds that we realized that you know this photo has kind of the spirit that we were looking for um Mm -hmm. especially around like you mentioned you know it's really hard to well this particular genre you know is not one particular um style of photography and so you know how do you judge that how do you (laughs) <laughs> How do you determine if like yeah. a street image is better than a landscape image or is better than an architecture image, you know? And um, right. in the short list, we even had a whole bunch of those. And so, you know, for this, it was like, it was funny that it ended up being such a, such a clear winner at the end. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think it was, it was just the strength of the composition and, and that drama in the image that pulled it over the line in that final conversation. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think um, both Stefan and I really liked, um, you know, the, the composition is really simple. Uh, the subject matter is really obvious. The scene and um, the actual, you know, emotion of the image is, is quite apparent, uh, as well as like this, the whole spirit of uh, the compact nature of what we're trying to judge mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think like a big thing, well, especially for me anyway, was like, um, regardless of the category, you know, what kind of images are more off the cuff than normal mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. especially you know speaking true to to the spirit of of you know just having a camera wherever you go right yeah 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 i mean in in that way i guess um there's definitely some common ground between street and and compact um just in that sense of spontaneity and and being there and and getting the shot yeah um, excuse me i've just pressed the wrong button uh, so then our, uh, our next one was, uh, excuse me, well, was it Kuala Lumpur or was it the other one? Let me see. The other one, uh, the Robin, yeah. oh, the, the Crested Cardinal, I believe. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, so this was such a different, um, such a different image. Uh, and again, I think this was a relatively late, uh, contender in this category. 
Yeah, it definitely was. Um, this one, Stefan advocated for quite a bit. Uh, and, you know, after after him bringing it up so much, you know, we, we definitely came to a decision for, you know, again, like, I think this really shows the versatility of what, especially those type of cameras, like these compact cameras mm -hmm. can do for, for you to be able to like transition from like a, a landscape wide or something like that all yeah. the way to like a telly straight into like wildlife. Right. It's so like, <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is on, uh, you know, one of the RX tens, which, you know, obviously like this is what they do best, right? Like they're awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, they give you 600 millimeter reach in a compact camera. That's crazy. That's something sort of very different. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, like this is a, ca a shot that would be really at home in the nature category um, uh, and, and, and has done really, done really well here obviously yeah um you know specifically what we really liked about this image was you know the 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 symmetry towards the shapes of the image um i remember mm. i was talking about that at length you know uh the triangles of of the the rock and the triangles of the bird's head and the, the angles that the, the bird is in i mean it's uh especially for stefan i remember um he was really enamored with the whole you know uh angular nature of everything and um yeah i think mm. it, uh, it, it's quite a Definitely welcome kind of has echoes there doesn't it yeah mm. um and then the last one was the the kl kuala lumpur close mm. living uh image um i think this was one that you really quite championed yeah yeah so i'm uh i guess i would lean more towards street urban architecture uh you know portraiture and all those kind of styles rather than mm. nature landscapes and uh astro and, and all those other kind of like more wild uh categories mm -hmm. and so for me specifically what i really liked about this image is that you know it's it's it for me is a, a quite a metaphorical um you know message about the human condition uh and the, mm -hmm. the varying different you know, living conditions we can all uh, be situated in, in mm. so many different parts of the world, right? Um, and then for, you know, coming back to uh, the compact camera idea, you know, coming back to potentially someone, a photographer walking through, you know, a, a residential park or something like that, and they're just quickly snapping this, but at the same time, making sure, you know, the fundamentals and the the technicalities of architecture photography are all there. You know, the lines are straight, the symmetry, mm -hmm. the balance, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think uh, for me, it really speaks to um, to urban photography specifically and to uh, compacts and, you know, the nature of the spontaneity. Yeah. I remember you were, um, uh, you know, you, you really liked that it was not, just a, a landmark photo, you know, because it, it, it does feel very free range. It's, right. you know, no, no one's, no one's going to this particular apartment complex to get the shot. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like, it's one of those things, like it's not a Instagram shot or, you know, anything like that. It's, it's mm -hmm. very much, well, what it feels like is very much off the cuff. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I really, really like that about this image. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, were there any other images that you wanted to highlight from the judging process? Uh, there was one that was on my short list, which was the Spanish one with the mm -hmm. uh, red dress ladies. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that one. I, I, I really dug this one because, um, again, it's it feels quite spontaneous. Um, it mm -hmm. feels like you're part of this conversation, right? Like what, what exactly is going on in this circle? Uh, what are they talking mm -hmm. about? You know, what just happened here? And there's this whole like little bit of intrigue and you're brought into uh, the idea of what's going on. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, I, I really enjoyed this image, even though, you know, technically it could have been better. Like perhaps it could have been maybe uh, cropped in a portrait format so that the luggage bags on the outsides weren't in, the, the image itself. Um, yeah. But again, like having that tell a little bit more of a story of like where they could have come from or like, you know, what they just did or like maybe they just came from a show or something like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think this speaks a lot and it has a lot, a lot of uh, stories to tell. Right. 
that, that's uh, that's just about all the time we have for the compact category. Thank you for tuning in. No worries. Thanks for having me. Appreciate time on stream. Have a good one. <laughs> Bye. All right. Moving right along now, uh, we're into the creative category. And uh, this category, I've been left to spin my wheels. So we might run a little uh, a little shorter than on some of the others, uh, catch up a bit of time. Um, but uh, we'll be jumping in and taking a bit of a look. So creative is a category that uh, we brought in this year. So in previous years, we haven't had uh, a creative category um, per se. We have had a, like an abstract category uh, and, and we do see a lot of the same people submitting in, uh, in abstract, in creative as used to submit in uh, abstract. Um, but really this was there to give a home to all the great photographic work that is done uh, that doesn't cleave to being, you know, one frame for one finished image, uh, where you can bring in multiple shots, you can bring in a more, uh, you know, more aggressive editing style. Uh, you can bring in images from different scenes and stitch them together and have that be fine, not be a problem at all. Um, even Astro and Landscape, where we have relatively uh, lax editing guidelines, especially for Astro. Uh, there's still an expectation that the all the source material that goes into an image should have been taken in one place at broadly the same time. Um, uh, but Astro obviously really start to stretch the definition of at the same time. Uh, so um, creative, then we actually wound up having you know our winner. Uh, from Grant Galbraith uh, being an image which you could just take in camera as far as I'm aware for the most part. Um, I haven't spoken to Grant about he captured this, how he captured this image, but there's obviously a really long exposure going on here um, and probably some work done in post as well. Uh, but the this image was really carried on the strength of uh, being something that you would just want to uh, look at for a really long time. It's got lots of little hints of different scenes in the frame. You can see the view uh, across the domain to the city. You can see uh, the opera house. Um, and you've got this sort of movement in the image from the long exposure, presumably, uh, which really kind of evokes a lot of the harbour. And that was something that Chris, uh, who was the judge of this category, uh, talked about uh, during our discussion was just having so many little things that reward closer inspection of the image. Um, uh, it's really the kind of image that you, you know, could happily have hanging on your wall as well. Um, uh, not that that's really something that we uh, specifically look for in a winner of a category, uh, but it's it's got that uh, nice quality to it that any Sydney cider could uh, probably connect with. Um, uh, or, or maybe people from other cities as well, who can say. So um, then we had uh, this brilliant image from Matthew uh, Palmer. Um, so this one uh, was uh, an interesting one. Um, Matt Palmer, I actually uh, have, we, we've had him talk uh, for Sony at uh, Head On previously. So I had, I, I knew him before the, uh, competition. Um, another reason why, uh, Sony employees don't get involved in the, the actual judging. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, this image, definitely not an image that's just about looking pretty. Uh, it's an image that's trying to say something. Um, and you know, Matt's, uh, little blurb about this image talks about the fact that he was, you know, walking through this forest and was constantly being distracted by the junk and garbage that inconsiderate hikers had left behind uh, that he was encountering as he was walking around. And this collage is his way of kind of telling us that story. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think Chris was really uh, moved by the the effectiveness of that, you know, it's not, it's not hard to pick apart the meaning of this photograph. Uh, I think if you look at it and, and think about what's going on and the way it's been presented, it's pretty easy to get a sense of it. Uh, and it's also, you know, Chris 
pointed out, it, it was a brave move to uh, kind of intentionally ugly up an image. You know, you take a, this beautiful shot of trees and then you throw a bunch of crap on top of it and, um, you know, you're making it look objectively worse. So then you're kind of trusting the judge to uh, to see that, to see what you're driving at. And, uh, and, and that was definitely something that Chris was uh, open to. So um, that, uh, that was a great finalist. And then uh, finally, uh, this great image uh, from Sujana Singh. Um, so this image, uh, I think, just as a storytelling piece, was really strong. We had a lot of really technically accomplished images in the creative category. Uh, and again, you know, I think this is going to be a common theme, but, you know, often in categories, you wind up with lots of images that are technically really good, you know, like getting good with the tools is, is hard, but then it's a, it's something that is kind of bounded, right? You, once you understand how to expose correctly and how to compose competently, uh, then you kind of know that and, and you can, uh, get a decent looking shot. Uh, but then to do something a little bit more and to tell a bit of a story and do something adventurous, um, that is often what gets you over the line for a prize. Um, so in this case, uh, the fact that Sajana's, uh, you know, combined these images in a really deliberate way and obviously looked for, uh, different elements that they could combine to, uh, get this effect. Um, you know, not an image without some criticisms. I know, uh, you know, Chris just had a few, uh, misgivings about some of the toning and, and some of the way that the overall composition sort of leans left a little bit with the tones. Um, but regardless, the overall story is really strong. Uh, it's saying something and it says it really clearly. Uh, through the tools that it has. So, um, yeah, Chris was uh, really happy with, with this image. Um, I realize now it must be very weird to hear me telling you what Chris thought, but um, unfortunately Chris couldn't be here. So, um, yeah, these are not necessarily my opinions, but um, I'm just trying to convey what the judges uh, said. So, um I think that's probably enough for the creative category. I won't pull out any of the other honorable mentions, although I will say it was a super strong category. And, and I know that uh, Chris spent a lot of time agonizing over this one. So um, yeah, definitely congrats to anyone who's tuning in, who was a, uh, a shortlisted in this category. It was uh, a tough fight. With that said, uh, it's time to mosey from creative on over to uh, our next category, which is editorial. And for that, I'm going to bring uh, Mark Gaylor onto the stream. Good evening, Mark. Hi, Sean. How's it going? Good. Enjoying your last, uh, what is it, 48 hours in the country? Maybe 24, I think, uh, 36 or something. Yeah, just got uh, permission this morning. Um, compassionate grounds to leave Australia, but it's a bit of a nightmare because nothing is booked at the other end. We right. just tried, I just tried to book something for self-isolation in the UK for two weeks, and they're all cancelling on me because <laughs> they must have heard uh, the, of the outbreak in Melbourne. Oh, God. Are you, are you one of the postcodes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but I'm, I don't think the British press are reporting rush. postcodes. <laughs> yeah. Come on, the Daily Mail's uh, it's a fine yeah. publication. Yeah. Um, uh, all right. Well, um, let's move on and talk a little bit about uh, about photography, just to mix things up. Um, so, editorial, uh, maybe just to give a little bit of background on the category for the, excuse me, folks at home. So editorial uh, is a category where we're not just interested in a single image, even though that's what's initially submitted. Um, we sort of select an image and then we ask for more images that tell uh, more of a story through, uh, you know, a, a series. It's like a photo essay typically. Um, and, you know, the reason that we call it editorial is because this kind of photography is usually done in the context of publication. You know, it might be for a newspaper, it might be for a magazine story, that sort of thing. Um, tell me if I'm going off base here, Mark. Um, no, that's all good. That's <laughs> so, um, so although we do 
uh, judge and display a single image. Um, each of these is backed up by a set of images which the photographer submitted along with it. Um, so with that said, Mark, uh, what was your what was your experience of the editorial category this year? Yeah, there was a little bit bit of diversity. We had everything from sort of um, uh, interior interiors of buildings, um, maybe a little bit of advertising. Um, mm -hmm. And also this uh, this narrative side, which I think was the uh, the biggest uh, section of submissions, people mm -hmm. submitting an image which uh, we just really wanted to know more about. Yeah, so we saw some interesting submissions, and obviously the uh, uh, a single image can say a lot, but there is also um, a level of ambiguity until we see the additional images. So we mm -hmm. don't really know what the photographer has been doing, uh, it might, whether it's a lucky one shot grab or whether it was a an ongoing project which they've been invested in for you know um days months maybe even years yeah yeah the um the editorial category always has a real sense of story to it you know no matter no matter what if you string if you string that many images together uh there's something that they're saying uh, regardless yeah. of whether you're um yeah, of what the images are almost. Um, so uh, the winning image here, uh, Ilan's um, timid. Uh, what what was it that made this one the top image in the end? Um, look, well, we know we we went um, we sort of went backwards and forwards on this one. Obviously, seeing the additional images uh, helped clarify. Obviously, we're very uh, up close and personal. You know, it's not, the shot isn't uh, grabbed from the other side of yeah. the village uh, with a 400 mil telephoto. So, um, and it's usually that connection with uh, with the photographer and their subject. And so, um, and obviously the subject is freely giving um, their image to the photographer. And there's a there's a good uh, sense of um, there's a, you know there's an inquisitiveness of the of the gaze, but there's also a relaxed expression. So the photographer hasn't rushed this. Obviously, there's a, there's an element of communication, even if they, they perhaps don't share the language. Uh, there's a there's a sense of patience about um, getting a story that unfolds over time. Mm -hmm. And that that was something that we sort of saw through the whole series as well. I think, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sort of. It, it, was sustained as well as um, yeah. being a really great example here. Yeah, um, and obviously, obviously the lighting is very dramatic on this one, so we're mm. very curious. You know, the background uh, makes us curious as well about uh, what is actually happening. So it was really good to see this in context with a series of portraits taken in the same village. Mm -hmm. um, so then moving on, uh, this one uh, from uh, Jamel Bartolome. Uh, who uh, was, uh, I believe, a category winner for Street last year? Um, mm. uh, what was it that grabbed the grabbed you about this one? Oh, it's such a you know. I think a lot of photographers, you know, know to use uh, windows and doorways and frames within frames. It's a it's a technique that a lot of photographers use, but it's been used exceptionally well in this one. You know, obviously, mm -hmm. um, we're told not to put the primary subject um, with their back to the uh, to the camera, but of course. Mm -hmm. um, I got that face in the little window looking out towards the character with his back. So there's a, um, there's a lot that's unsaid, you know, and uh, the caption obviously is quite important in these type of things because it, it gives a little clue as to what is happening. Now, a lot of people um, travel, you know, around the world with their camera and shoot stories as they travel. But this one is in a, you know, you don't see tourists rushing out and uh, photograph uh, migrant workers in Kuwait, was it? I think mm -hmm. something like this one. And so um, obviously it's, it's something that uh, the person has gone off the beaten track um, to start recording a story or narrative about a certain aspect of these uh, migrant workers. And um, yeah, the black and white really uh, suits this image, I, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think it's been really interesting to see um, not only more work from this photographer in this series, but also uh, his submissions over time. You know, he he often has these kind of incomplete figures where you'll have someone, you know, in a weird in a weird context, context mm -hmm. or you know, looking uh, sort of in a in a strange direction that you don't expect. And um, it's interesting to see. Uh, you know, now that he's is one, uh, two, uh, well, you know, been shortlisted and and then um, 
won a prize in the previous year. Uh, it, it's not just something where it's a lucky capture. You know, this is something yeah. he's going out and looking for. Yeah, it reminded me of an old Andre Cortez, you know, black and white image shot in Paris. Obviously, different city, different people, different protagonists, mm. but uh, it's got that um, uh, lovely design and decisive moment going about it. So then um, uh, our final shortlist, or uh, sorry, final finalist, um, this is, um, uh, it's, it's, what, do you remember what the, the festival is called? Oh, that's. Fled my mind. Uh, yeah. uh, no, <laughs> you me on the spot there. Yeah, <laughs> I've never actually photographed this festival. I know there's some people brave, you know, brave enough mm. to uh, have their cameras covered in the uh, the powder. Yeah, we'll just see. He bought a. He didn't bring a cheap camera either. So um, there you go. He went all in. <laughs> he went all in. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> testing the uh, the weatherproofing of the cameras. Absolutely, yeah. dust dust yeah. resistance. Yeah. Um, what uh, what was it about this image that, that grabbed you? Uh, I think, um, you know, a lot of photographers have worked out that um, often less is more. You know, you simplify an image and uh, mm -hmm. the individual elements get stronger for it. And so um, this one actually is a very busy image, but it, 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 it doesn't hurt the image whatsoever because there's obviously a very key character in amongst all of those people. In fact, there's no negative space in between the people at all. It's just a, it's just a mm. sea of busy uh, people. And I think um, what helps the composition is uh, just the fact that it's um, there's pretty much only two colors in this, just the, the red and the yellow. Mm -hmm. But I think um, it's also, you know, become a bit of a tourist thing that, uh, you know, backpackers will, um, will, will engage right. in this type of festival. But there's no there's no element of um, tourists in this. It's obviously uh, it's no one's, uh, no one's playing up for the camera here. No one's playing up for the camera. Yeah. So I think it's just great. Uh, I think the design and the and the, just the narrative um, storytelling about this key key character. It's so, sort of um, you can see a little bit of powder coming in from the top left, but it's <laughs> almost like um, the calm after the storm. Yeah. Mm, mm, yeah. Um, any, any other sort of things that struck you about the editorial submissions this year or something else you wanted to shout out? Um, no, I think, um, I, this, was this a fairly new category this year or was I just new to judging this category? It's actually reintroduced this year. Okay, reintroduced. Um, okay. Yeah. We, we had done it in previous years and then we, yeah. we'd sort of, um, stepped away from it. And then, uh, you know, I guess with the A9, more people using, uh, the gear in these sort of contexts, we decided to bring it back. Yeah, I think um, you know I've I've talked um, in my own um, uh, sessions uh, for Sony about um, the key to sort of building narrative. You know, um, it's not just repeating the same formula and over and over again in a series mm -hmm. of images. It's often um, using establishing images and uh, the portrait image and the action shots. You know, uh, pieces of a jigsaw puzzle which uh, build. Uh, a big, the bigger picture, but obviously, if we're going to carry on um, um, ask, inviting uh, participants to submit the additional images after the first key image, obviously, the first key image has got to really uh, raise our curiosity. And uh, yeah. we, we obviously saw quite a few that did that, you know, because we we put out the feelers to um, was it about ten people or something to um, submit more. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was a really really strong year. Um, so, um, well, look, thank you very much, Mark, for your time okay, on stream. Um, and, uh, and good luck with your travels. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you before you, uh, leave the country, okay. no doubt. Okay. <laughs> All right. Catch you later. All right. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. So uh, next up, we're moving on to landscape, and we're lucky to have all three judges for landscape joining us this evening. Um, before we move on to that, and because we're just a shade ahead of time, I just wanted to take a second and say a massive thank you and props to everyone who has entered this competition. Uh, it's you know it's intimidating to put your work out there, uh, but it is uh, you know incredible the the caliber of photography that we get every year. And, uh, you know, to everyone who uh, has submitted uh, and who has taken the time and put in the energy to uh, put themselves out there, uh, a huge thank you and a, and a massive congratulations because uh, the field in every category this year was really incredibly strong. And with that said, 
let's move on and have a quick chat with our judges from Landscape. Uh, we have Rachel, Karen, and Megan. Hey, guys. Hi. Hello. Hey, team. Good to see you. Is everyone uh, staying staying safe? Well, I guess, Megan, you don't have to stay safe. And, you, oh, and Rachel, you guys can just do whatever you want. <laughs> Is that right? Pretty much. <laughs> I'm so jealous, these Kiwis. <laughs> um, well, uh, let's, uh, let's wash thought of that from our minds and, uh, and focus on landscape photography. Um, have you guys been uh, getting out, getting active, taking some shots lately? Yeah, sure have. Just come back from 10 days on the South Island, so definitely oh. been taking advantage of the freedom to travel. Fish in a barrel down there. Very jealous. <laughs> this is this category. Um, actually, I think this might be the first time in a while that New Zealand haven't uh, taken this category. This is... Uh, I feel like New Zealand always overperforms in uh, in landscape. Oh, actually, that's not right, because uh, Karen took it last year. So, so that's. Uh, but we always see a lot of New Zealanders in this category. It's sort of like a classic. Um, you just you just have the hard the raw physical beauty over there to kind of compete on another level. Um, so, guys, um, I'm going to ask. Uh, I, I guess for the, for the group, but I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna throw it straight to you, Karen, because you're right in the middle there, for my view. Uh, what did you what what struck you about the landscape submissions? <laughs> I think it was just the diversity of all the photos. It was just, I think for me being a um, participant last year and then kind of being on the other side and being a judge this year, it was just really mm -hmm. good to see all the different um, photos. I think. Um, when I was entering it last year, I always wondered what other images people are submitting. Um, and then so this year, seeing all the images, it was just really good to see the variety out there. And it was also like very inspiring to see like the talent um, that's out there. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, yeah. Megan, how was your, uh, do, 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 you, do you agree? Was everyone very talented or do you, do you think everyone was garbage? <laughs> no, there's definitely a, there was definitely a huge range, I think, of of um, sort of submissions because I mean, landscape's really one of the most entered in terms of the number of submissions that we got. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, you, there's definitely um, I think the more time I spent looking through entries, the more I was able to kind of like um, what's the word sort of hone my eye, I guess, in a way. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sort of got to the stage where, you know, those early entries, you kind of ummed and a bit about, you know, oh, yeah, do I like this one, do I not? But by the time you got to sort of, you know, entry number, you know, 495 or whatever it ended up being, you, mm. were, you were really kind of able to get a really quick sort of take on, yeah, this is really worth, you know, having another look at and, and, and worth shortlisting kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rachel, anything sort of jump out at you about this year's entries? Oh, it just, I think because of the climate that we're in at the moment, it all just made my feet itch. I just wanted to go everywhere that <laughs> been. They, yeah, they made me want exactly what they were showing. It was really cool. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, the wanderlust is, is real. Um, so for this image then, uh, Annapurna South uh, uh, by Jesse Little, um, any, any thoughts uh, beyond the sort of comments? On this one, I, I think. Oh, um, sorry, sorry. <laughs> For this image, I remember. I think the one word that we all used to describe it was was that it was epic. I think that was the word that we all mm -hmm. used, and I think it was just such a cool image with like the different light and the clouds and the mist and just the shadows um, within the image. It was just a really cool picture, and it, it made me really want to go there myself and take this, take a similar shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The yeah. um, sorry, you go. That's all right. Um, it had a beautiful sense of balance for me. I I know there's um there's that mist coming through on the bottom, but there's also that really moody sky, and it it just compositionally it really really worked as well as having that moody punch to it. Yeah, it was really cool. Mm. It stood out right from the start for me. The um, I think this was another category where we had you know, a really wide field of images right up to the, to the very end, really, you know, it wasn't like, um, there weren't 
a lot of contenders uh, going into that final round. Uh, and so uh, even though, you know, this one definitely, I think by the, by the end of that conversation, it was pretty clear. Um, it, it was not a, uh, it wasn't a shoe in by any, by any stretch. Um, so the, um, this one I, I remember was really well shortlisted as well. Um, uh, and it's quite a unique image. Um, normally we're sort of looking for big epic vistas and that sort of stuff in landscape, but this one's so much smaller and more kind of the range feels much smaller. Um, I don't know. Does anyone want to speak, to speak a little bit about what made this one stand out? Yeah, I mean, I think the the light in this one, I mean, it could it could just not work, but for this particular image and the way it's been um, captured, it just does. So it, it, it could look horrific trying to capture, a, you know, those sort of rays coming through through the forest, but it's just been done so beautifully and kind of almost captured a bit of a, a rainbow effect as well. Um, but also I know that when we looked at the sort of the high-res version of this too, everything was just so sharp in this image too. Like, I think it would be quite easy um, because it's sort of it's simple for you know for you to kind of you know look past that and just sort of see the light but you know the fact that it was sharp from front to back um you know and just yes yeah, simple but the just the all the elements worked the the vertical tree trunks the snow the light hitting the snow and those those um rays coming through it i know for me it was one that immediately stood out when i was scrolling through so mm, mm. yeah I totally agree with that. I think um, for me, it's one of those it's one of those images, and it could be my own um, photographic photographic limitations. But it's something that I I can see with my eyes, but photographically to capture it well takes takes a bit more effort than you you think it would. And they've done mm. a really good job of it. Yeah. 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 Certainly, you know, forest images often come across busy, but this one seems to seems to kind of rise above it. Um. So then uh, next up we have uh, this really, sorry, such a contrasting image with uh, the previous ones. Very, very uh, pared back and uh, minimal desert image. Um, anyone want to uh, sort of lead, on, lead in with this one? Uh, I was um, drawn to this image because for me, I do a lot of aerial photos and I just... I'm naturally drawn to aerial photos and I just love all the shadows in this and just how the leading lines just kind of makes you draw, draws your eye around the whole image. Um, and I just love it. Mm -hmm. It actually really reminds me of uh, uh, Andy Yee had a uh, image. Um, this is probably two years back, uh, which was an aerial uh, taken in uh, Namibia that was you know, similar Visually, but without it wasn't black and white. It was it obviously had a heap of color in it. Um, uh, but this one, just by going black and white, focuses in so much on on the texture and the um, the structure. Mm. Um, who, who had this on their short list? Does anyone remember? I think I did. Yeah, I did yeah. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think this was a. Sorry. Sorry, you go. I think the black and white um, conversion here has been handled really, really well. It's um, it's easy to overcook that sort of thing and just push it far too far. But even in print, I think this would come out really, really beautiful. Mm, mm, definitely. Um, were there any other special mentions that you guys wanted to quickly talk about before we uh, move on to other categories? Well, I think we I think we um denied quite a long time between sort of knocking it down to the top three. There was that one other um, was it scar hearts image that um, I think we we looked at for a really long time and and um mm -hmm. denied about that sort of being sort of the, the fourth or third place. So um, for me, that was probably also another one that was um, you know pretty spectacular. Um, it's mm. simple. Um, but just the layers and the, the, the mist right. and stuff worked really beautifully. Yeah, this one definitely um, definitely got up uh, pretty late in the contention. Um, but I think even just looking at the the gallery of thumbnails here, you can see what a what a strong field it was. Um, mm. We definitely had were spoiled for spoiled for choice in a lot of ways. Yeah, there was a lot of amazing images in there. 
Guys, um, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, uh, and um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk to you all soon, no doubt. Um, but have a great night. We'll move on. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. All right. Uh, so with landscape out of the way, um, I did want to quickly address a, a question that came up um, earlier, um, just about uh, editorial, um, asking why we don't post the larger set. Um, and to be honest, it's it's just a question of um, that being such a different uh, category to all the others. Uh, typically, we have single images, and that's the way we judge, and that's the way we um, share the images. But uh, adding, uh, I guess, a more bespoke solution for editorial where we can accept multiple images and then share multiple images in the gallery, definitely on our to-do list for next year. No promises, but um, that's definitely something that we'd really love to do because, yeah, obviously, that's what we want to see. That's what we want, what we want to show. Um, so, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Moving right along, we're now up to, where's my handy-dandy guide? I've been... I'm, I'm lost. I'm at sea. I'm completely astray. I'm going to look at my at my little cheat sheet. Here we are. We're up to youth. Uh, youth is another one where, uh, sadly, we're not able to be joined by the judge. Um, and so I'm going to uh, spin my wheels here a little bit. Um, I did actually uh, want to speak briefly about uh, the way that the youth category is run uh, because it's so different to all the other categories. Uh, we have, for our normal categories, we have uh, a really clear uh, separation where you have to shoot on all Sony gear uh, because, you know, it's about celebrating work that's done on Sony cameras and lenses. But for the youth category, you know, we're talking to people who potentially have never made a purchasing decision about cameras in their lives. Um, you know, they're still getting started. They're kind of uh, at that at that opening moment. And so we really wanted to open it up to a wider audience. So our youth competition actually is open to anyone shooting on anyone below the age of 18, um, read the fine print, uh, shooting on pretty much anything. You could shoot it on a phone. You could shoot it on uh, another camera system. Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we run it through Instagram because that's a uh, slightly younger skew platform. And, um, and then from those initially submitted images, so that always, that, that competition is run with a keyword, we'll say um, oh, this year it's uh, evolution. Um, so we put that out there, people submit on the theme. And then if, uh, if people, uh, once people submit, we draw up a short list and we send that to our judge who is uh, Tyson Mayer. Uh, he's actually run it. He's been our, our youth judge uh, every year we've run it. Um, uh, and he, he's always uh, does a great job of it. Um, and as a, you know, he's a really talented photographer himself. So uh, he has a great eye for it. He'll select two images to be the finalists in that category. And then both the finalists get uh, an A6 Previously, it's been A6000s. This year, it was an A6400. Um, they get a camera. They get a lens uh, from us. And that's what they get to keep that. Just for getting that far, they get that camera to keep. And then we put them in a head-to-head -head challenge. So normally, we bring them into Sydney. We film the whole thing. And that's something that you watch on the awards night for Alpha Awards. Uh, unfortunately, of course, that was off the cards this year. Uh, but we still did do the head-to-head -head challenge. So uh, Tyson gave the guys a uh, uh, subject, uh, gave them a target, and uh, they got to spend uh, eight hours, six hours each, four hours each, four hours each, uh, creating an image that they would submit as their final image, uh, which is shot on the camera and lens they were provided. So it's a nice way to give them uh, a nice even playing field, uh, we still get to showcase great work done on our cameras and lenses, which of course, it's always important to us. Uh, and uh, and we get to kind of bring people in from a, I guess, a broader church. Uh, and then the winner of that, uh, they get the uh, category prize as well. So talking quickly a little bit about um, the two submissions here, uh, both really, really strong images. Um, uh, 
Alex's uh, image, um, the this is he, he's based in South Island, New Zealand. Uh, so uh, I guess all the all the things we talked about with uh, natural beauty, home ground advantage uh, for New Zealand uh, rings true here. Uh, pretty stunning location. Uh, Alex's initial submission was actually a really striking one because it was had a, had a really strong message. It actually kind of felt like an editorial submission. Uh, he had a, a series of images that he submitted uh, where he had a, a subject who was wearing a sort of hazmat suit. So a uh, big yellow jumpsuit, uh, the mask, the goggles, the whole bit. And then the, the image that Tyson ultimately selected as the winning image uh, was this subject in the full hazmat suit sitting on a surfboard uh, in the middle of some big body of water. And, uh, you know, ultimately it was just such a, such a striking and different image uh, that was also, you know, had a message. Uh, and I think that really appealed for Tyson. Uh, and, um, and you can see sort of that uh, idea of having, um, you know, a subject in a context uh, being carried through on this image. Um, so the uh, the other image, uh, Michael's uh, image here, Duende, um, very different approach. Uh, the theme for both of these was solitude. So um, you can see that kind of reflected in in both of them. Um, Michael's uh, he sort of used the a uh, much more uh, you know busy frame, uh, but had these great leading lines and a really uh, really adventurous technique as well. You know he's gone for a, a really uh, he's done a lot here. You know he's used light painting, he's he's used long exposure, um, and he's included a subject a, a model in a long exposure image, uh, which uh, is is a hard thing to do. And um, and so. That was something that really, I think, impressed uh, Tyson uh, and, and scored a lot of points. Uh, but ultimately, it was uh, just the, uh, the clarity of the subject and the idea. Um, you know, it's such a clean image, this one, and um, it's just so clearly executed to, to communicate something. So, um, yeah, a really closely run category. Um, and it'll be great to get back to running this uh, as usual next year. Uh, I think this category more than any other, really. Uh, we love being able to bring, you know, two young people to Sydney. It's an exciting thing for them. It's often the first time they've uh, got to uh, travel you know, internationally for the New Zealand guys. And, um, uh, you know, they get to do something really different. It's, it's, uh, it's great to just be close to that and, and see how much, uh, of a great experience it is for them. Um, and I think it adds a lot to the awards night. So yeah, we'll be, we'll be really excited to get back to business as usual next year. All right. Well, with that said, I'm a little ahead of time, but I think uh, I'm probably going to press on and we'll move on to our next category, which is portrait. And I'm joined for portrait by uh, extremely talented Melbourne photographer, Ben King. Good evening, Ben. Hello, Sean. Nice to hear from you. Oh. Can you hear me? Likewise, likewise. Yeah, we had a little moment of uh, delay there, but I think we're we're good. We're all set. How good were those youth entrants? Amazing. Amazing. I and and they get they get four hours from from brief to finished uh, finished image. It's uh, I, I love I the painting that the. the painting with led panel that's brilliant i love that it was it was something else yeah but, but yeah both of them honestly um blew me away yeah mm, no both um, really really gorgeous so um portraiture uh was a a really um interesting one this year i think um what was your what was your uh, sort of initial thoughts looking through the uh the submissions um, I suppose uh, my first impression was that there was a lot of images which were not, which were um, con not con contrived is not a, a, a flattering term, but uh, staged, I suppose, rather mm -hmm. than um, real people in their own, in, in, a, in a, engaging in a, in, a, in a moment that's representative of themselves. And so I suppose I was, Personally, I'm personally drawn to 
um, authenticity in a portrait it doesn't necessarily, I don't, I'm not diminishing images that are staged or structured or studio based um, at mm. all. But for me, uh, a, a pure portrait is one where uh, the image is a representation of the um, individual and the, the, you know, and their, and their environment or their uh, um, experience or the collective or just something that it's resonant and, and makes people uh, makes the makes the viewer think about who that person is and what their environment might be. And I felt like the winning entrant for this was really it, it had a she, her 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 her, um, her image is, is wonderfully ambiguous. She's there's a gorgeous amb ambiguity to her to her face. So that that's what I'm that's what I'm drawn to in 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 our in our winner. Mm -hmm. mm. And it's it's an interesting one as well because you read the description and it was just taken on Rundle Mall, which is sort of the main drag in Adelaide. Um, mm. uh, which you know you wouldn't you wouldn't expect. It's such a clean image, uh, and yet you know it was sort of taken yeah. in, in in the middle of that hustle and bustle. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if you look at her eyes, you can see there's all of this reflected light just kind of punching straight back and. Mm -hmm. The only way you could achieve that in a studio is if you had, you know, people or, you know, with reflectors or um, lighting, you know, she looks lit. And so um, mm. our, photo our photographer was clearly aware of the, the, the available light advantage that they had when, when she shot that. So um, I, I, I find that really commendable, but also the bravery of being able to just approach a really interesting young person and to say uh there's a you know outside of the the craft of photography there's a certain social protocol associated with portraiture and just mm -hmm. being having the willingness to approach uh a cheng and say to her i would love to shoot you and 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 can you look at me like you're listening or like you're thinking or or some mm -hmm. really calm and casual i mean to, to to be able to do that is a skill in itself and to also combine that with good black and white treatment and good use of reflected light and you know a really high contrast um uh treatment and, and background I, th I, I i don't know i just this was the shot that really s stood out for me in that respect so yeah it's got a lot right. of things going on the, the, to me the the the, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts with this particular shot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so then the, the Pelican keeper, um, this is a submission from one of the, one of only two people in the whole awards to have got up for more than one category. Um, right. Uh, so, uh, but, but, a sort of a very different and interesting, um, image. What was your, what sort of drew you to this one? Um, I suppose the um, the the use of hard light, you know, that chiaroscuro effect with the shadowing, and um, also mm -hmm. the binary between this bizarre-looking animal and this man's <laughs> um, interaction with it, and he's quite clearly very comfortable. But it's not really, for me, a portrait of of the bird or or a portrait of him it's a kind of a portrait of both of them and mm. um and they complement each other beautifully because you know it, he's he's he his you know he's laughing and then looking away and 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 the bird is looking to you they, they, they just seem extremely comfortable together and uh i don't know i was a bit arrested by that and um but there's a nice contrast between them as well because the bird is is all white and and he's he's in black but and I quite like that little strip in the in the middle of the frame. Mm. But mm -hmm. from a storytelling point of view, I mean, you can't help but wonder why um, this, you know, elderly guy is holding a very large aquatic bird. I mean, it's a really bizarre kind of scenario. So that mm. that 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 it, it's an it's a very intriguing image. But it's also an image that shows that you know, there's a, there's a certain unity that can exist between humankind and, and nature and a, 
Um, mm. And I, I get the feeling that this is a situation that gets sh- photographed a lot. Like I think he's probably very used to being shot like this. Um, mm-hmm. And probably that that's, a, that's probably the reason why I, I thought it was more of a, of a runner up than a winner because um, it did look like a shot that was probably in a, in an environment that had been covered a lot, but, but I do really love the, the tone of it and the, the, the use of sun and the kind of the, the contrast. It's a, it's a beautiful high contrast image, Sean. So um, mm. I think that's what really drew me to that. And, and also just that binary between people and animals, you know, mm. it's um, a, um, uh, it's an unusual um, lens and focal length for portraiture as well. It's at twelve to twenty-four uh, ultra wide lens. So yeah, right. Um, okay. He's really uh, he's he's uh, got right in mean, there. Yeah. 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 Um, well, it's commendable, definitely. And then the the final image in this category, uh, something a little bit a little bit different, I think, to the other images you had shortlisted. Is, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is absolutely. I mean, uh, you mentioned when we first started talking about these images that you know I clearly gravitated to black and white, and it's true. And I didn't. There was not a deliberate thing. I, I didn't really think of uh, black and white being my only criteria for good portraiture. But um, and you're not, a, you're so not a photographer who works. You know, uh, uh, from from what I've seen of your work, you don't work with any particular preference in black and white. No, I very rarely shoot black and white, but I think it'd be fair to say that my favorite portraiture photographers do use black and white, like Leonard Creed and um, Sally Mann and, mm-hmm. you know, people like that. I, I do respond to it, but um, this this image to me was really, I felt really haunting and, uh, and ethereal and uh, um, I just, I just, I just thought it was really beautiful. I, I think the, the photographer here did a wonderful job of, of, um, of getting, getting himself into a position where he could capture both the environment and, and the swimmer. Uh, it's, I, I don't know. I just feel like it's a, a, a photo that, that both the subject and the photographer should be really, really proud of. It's a very beautiful, beautiful image. Mm-hmm. And it just kind of reminds me of a, you know, siren song or, you know, mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know. Just it's, it's it's very pretty, and also the the way her body is is lit by the the, the shafts of light, and um, and it's also got that gorgeous tropical feeling, but without being kind of you know really colorful and bright. It's 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 kind of it's a, it's a, I, I I really did think this was a really moving image. It's um, a photo you'd normally see in color. Yeah, yeah that's right. Just, you like. You know that this is blue and green, like uh, you know, without actually there being any color. Like you can imagine, like I, I, you can just look at it and go, like I know exactly what the colors in this would look like. Yeah, that's right. And I think it's cool that um, our photographer didn't didn't make a point of converting it to a kind of tropical, you know, paradise. It was, you know, it's it's unusual to see that 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 combination of gothic, uh, black and white, you know, noirish. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know uh treatment with um a tropical environment so no i think it's a terrific shot and um uh i i i kind of it's one of those shots that you know makes you a bit envious to be in that situation where you're kind of just bobbing up and down in the shallows of the mm. tropical lagoon and uh, uh it's a beautiful beautiful shot so um you know heartfelt congrats to to this shooter and, and everyone involved in, in this in this series yeah absolutely well, Ben, thank you for uh, for jumping on and and sharing your thoughts on uh, the finalist images. Um, My absolute thanks for, pleasure, Sean. Uh, for your participation as well. Frankly, it's been a really wonderful experience, so I really appreciate it. Hopefully, we'll do it again. Great. All right. Well, have a great night. You too. Cheers. Bye. Bye. All right. Uh, so. With portraiture done, we're moving on, and now we're taking a look at Seascape. And I'm joined uh, by one of our Seascape judges this evening, uh, the very talented Luke Shark. Good evening, mate. Hey, Sean. How are you going? Good to see you. 
Good, very good. You look like you've upgraded your uh, your live streaming setup here. Am I seeing a little oh, bit of yes, yeah. there? I've, um, I've gone full Sony now, so I've got a A6300 and a 24GM going with that. I tried to get a Sony Love mic, it. but um, they're a little bit hard to come by, but, yeah, doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> they're rare as hen's teeth, I should know. Um, uh, well, um, congratulations on your, your setup upgrade, and um, thanks for jumping on to share your thoughts. Oh, not not at all. I mean, it was a, it's a real privilege to be involved in events like this. So, yeah, thank you for having me on. Pleasure. Um, so we had a, uh, I thought, an absolute corker of a field in, in Seascape this year. I uh, sadly missed the first round. I only came in for the, the second round of judging. Um, but I have to say I was I was really sat on my bum by the, the, the quality of the field. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, there were some absolute crackers in there and um, we were deliberating quite long trying to work out exactly um, which ones were going to be the finalists, I suppose. And um, But, yeah, I'm really um, happy with the choices we ended up making. I'm going to, I'm going to work backwards this time um, and uh, we'll, we'll go from the runners-up to the, the category winner. So yeah. um, this is a funny one, of course, because this, this wound up taking the top spot for the entire competition, um, yeah. which – you know, I think it definitely speaks to the fact that um, different judges are going to see different things that they, they appreciate. Um, but uh, I don't know, why don't you tell me a bit about your your thoughts about this image? Yeah, I was certainly um, not, not surprised, shall I say, when I saw this was the grand winner, but um, I certainly, um, I actually really did like this image and I actually went into bat for it. Um, I think um, mm. uh, one of the judges wasn't as keen on it and um, I think one other one was and so we were sort of, I mean, an R ring, but um, I actually liked it a lot more when I could actually see the raw file and you um, yep. zoom in and, and really um, the, the the very parts that you want to be sharp are sharp, right on those water droplets that are splashing through the air there, um, flying through the air. That's all mm. um, ridiculously sharp. And um, it's really, I think, a, a kind of image that would look a lot better in print. I mean, I don't think you can really fully um, appreciate um, all the detail and and what the photographer's done, um, and like um, on the screen. I think, uh, yeah, I, I have a feeling it would look pretty good on print. But um, yeah, I love the color toning from the dark um, in the foreground to the much lighter green. It's a very very pleasing um, color tone, and then it really abruptly changes to that um, very very dark um, hill top I suppose mm. in the distance uh, mm -hmm. and then you sort of um, have less detail there I guess in the sky and that sort of helps you not get too distracted from I guess the crest of the wave that's breaking there so um, and then you, then on top of that you've got all the um, really gorgeous detail of those um, those droplets in the air which as I mentioned are just completely sharp so it's um you know, when you zoom in on it yeah it's really nice so yeah I, I love yeah. it. Yeah yeah I definitely agree I think you know a lot of people um view this gallery maybe for the first time or maybe for the only time uh on a maybe a mobile device or a smaller screen and um I, I can definitely see why a lot of people would look at this image and just go i don't know it doesn't seem to have that much going on uh and it, it is it's not until you see all the fine scale detail and really get up close and i, I mean honestly it at the risk of sounding like a broken record i mean it, to me it just drives home how much of a pity it is to not have a, a gallery and, and be able to show these images big oh, and printed yeah. and with all the detail um, because I, I do think this image yeah, would, would jump off the page uh, or off the canvas um, printed. Yeah, for mm. sure. Um, so then um, stepping back, we have, uh, sorry, and that was, that was uh, uh, Oscar Hetherington, uh, his image um, from New Zealand. Uh, um, the other thing I really liked about that one I forgot to mention as well, the previous one was that, um, you know, when you looked at the raw file, it's it's pretty much exactly what what he what he shot in camera too. That's the other thing mm -hmm. that I thought was really good. I'm sorry about that, but yeah, 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 it's uh, mm, remarkable. So Rob actually submitted a, a, a series of really strong iceberg images, um, uh, and and uh, all of them got up. To the shortlist, I think, or three yeah. of three from that series made it to the shortlist level. Yeah, it was very interesting too. Um, he had another shot um, that um, 
was um, was the judges were really very keen on. And unfortunately, when we saw it a bit closer up, we could see that it was a little bit softer. But um, thankfully, this one um, was um, sharp where it needed to be. Um, and so that that certainly, um, I, I, I really um, love this image too. Um, I love the, the different color tones. It's basically like a study in blues, really, um, the different mm. shades of blue and, and the reflections and, and how that all um, you know, can come together. So um, obviously was very fortunate to go to some pretty awesome locations for photography. And mm. um, I think the other reason it stood out so much is um, you can imagine that there's so many shots taken at beaches and rock shelves and things like that. And then when, when, as a judge, when you come across something like this, it really makes you stop and think and try and work out what it is initially. And um, be because mm. it's so different to all of the other entries that you're going to see, I think automatically um, you've got a bit of that wow factor. Uh, so Definitely helps. that's it. It certainly stopped me in my tracks. Mm. Um, and then, so going on to our uh, our top winner, Carl. Um, so obviously taken in the surf, this one. Um, what uh, what took this one over the line? Yeah, well, um, actually, um, this was much more um, like I was saying with the with Oscar's shot. Initially, I was very in favour of that. This was actually um, I was dark horse, wasn't it? As, as keen on this one, and I think right. um, that's also because of style. Like um, Will and um, Rambo, the other two judges, really love this kind of work, and so I think um, that that's that's fed into a lot of that. Um, and they probably yeah. have a better appreciation than I do of how hard it would be to pull off a shot like this. And so um, for, for that reason, I was tending to look at some of the other images, I think, but that's all part mm. of the judging process and why we have a variation in judges. But um, yep. I, I certainly, um, I had got my arm twisted, shall we say, but um, I, I do love the <laughs> image. It's not that um, not that I don't, it's just um, I've got to compare it against all the others. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, what was really good was the control of the highlights where the um, sun is in the right, left of frame there, centre left, uh, and mm -hmm. also the um, how sharp the actual um, wave feature is in terms of the little lip that's coming off the top of the wave there. It's it's just sharp where you want it to be sharp, basically. Um, and then it's just that really nice lead in, maybe a little bit of a um, sort of orange highlight there in the foreground, which is sort of reflecting that sunlight too. So, yeah, it's just a very pleasing image and, and composed well. Uh, and and when we looked at the raw as well, it, and you know it was just um, you know edited well, put together well, and and um, executed well. So it, it is mm. very deserved winner. Yeah, I think it, it's uh, it's a, such a clean image as well. Uh, yeah. You know, there, there's nothing nothing in the image which doesn't contribute to uh, bringing you to that to that point. Everything points up to. The, the the crash of the wave and and there's just no distractions mm. um all the tones are just so so um, and there's yeah, a really know, um, texture there too in the in the water and it's like almost uh, ribbed or um the streaking mm. um it, you know you can uh, it's, yeah it's a lot of detail there that that um is very satisfying yeah yeah it really has that glassy look to it yeah I know, um, yeah, Rambo uh, was was a really big fan of this one, and I think yeah. a big big admirer of of the way it was uh, it was treated, especially. Uh, so, yeah. big props, big Absolutely. props. Yeah. Uh, any others that you sort of uh, you know would like to shout out before uh, um, you, you you step off your soapbox? Uh, look, I think there. Were, I mean, there was just so many different entries um, that that um, I, there was quite a lot that I liked, and I guess I was always um, drawn towards the more uh, uh, different than I guess a general seascape um, that you would get at the beach because that that, mm -hmm. that was the vast majority, and so I guess um, that was that was a big part of it. But yeah, if you put the filter on, I can certainly point out a couple yeah. that I thought were were um, quite nice. Um, can see a few more of uh, uh, Rob's here, I think. Yeah, as well. that's right. And um, one that I particularly liked was um, the one under Oscar's um, shot. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there. That's right. That's that one, a lot of um, had this some one. really nice. So it's an, one that's hard to also appreciate um, smaller, but um, the I guess um, what the what the judges um, I guess ended up sort of. Um, I guess took points off if you put it that way was some of the uh, highlights in in the center of the the star features there but um, mm -hmm. it's just a really I, I love the fact that it's just a very simple shot but um, executed well and you've got these um really interesting um, specular highlights there um, providing that those starbursts 
Um, so mm. it's, it was just a, an example of um, when you're judging and coming across a very different shot to, to what you might see as a standard seascape. So it's always good to think outside the square and, and um, try something a little bit different um, and maybe look at some detail shots. I have to admit, I never really do that myself. It's probably why I don't do that, do that well in competitions. But, um, yeah, that's, um, that's, it's always a good, good thing to do. So. Yeah, beauty. Yeah. Is there any other, any other there or are we running out of time? We are, we are running short on time. We could probably yeah. put one more up if you wanted to highlight something. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, what was another one I really liked? The um, – yeah, I think the one – the top the top left um, shot, um, that, that I really did like that. And um, I think it really came down to perhaps the shutter speed um, – wasn't quite fast enough for the, the capture um, because it would be a telephoto image. And yeah. so um, it was just had a little bit of softness, but um, I, I really do want to call out that shot as well as, as being absolutely fantastic um, just because of the beautiful ripples in the foreground with the reflections, just a, a, and then yeah, again, a, just a nice amount of uh, blue color toning there as well. That um, yeah, it's just a very interesting image. So yeah, that's, a, that's another one. That one actually got. I think all all um all the judges actually shortlisted that one or, or picked that I one think, initially. So yeah, up yeah. until getting the high res, I think it was it was very much a front runner, and it was yeah. really just that, that closer yeah. look that um sadly. It's, uh, I think the, it does, does it does speak to um um ensuring that you know you you're also on on the point technically, um but you know we all have we'll all have make have our um um bad moments with, behind the camera and and don't quite nail it like we want to so yeah no no discouragement there whatsoever. Absolutely, well Luke, thanks for being part of the process and thanks for coming on tonight. Oh yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Brilliant. All right. Have a good night, mate. See yeah. Ya. All right, uh, so moving along now, we're going to take a look at sports and I'm joined by a uh, noted sports tennis photographer, primarily, Andy, uh, from uh, Sydney, Australia. How are you doing, Andy? Pretty good, thanks, Sean. How are you? I'm great. You, it's um, been a long night for you. It's been a fun night, though. I, I always enjoy, uh, you know, looking at the looking at all the images that have been submitted and and having a chat through them. So, uh, it's uh, it's my pleasure. Um, and uh, how how did the um, how did you enjoy the process of judging uh, this year? Well, I I guess this is, this is actually always a privilege to um, be a judge, <laughs> and uh, and thanks for the invitation. Um, this is my second year um, for this um, uh, award judging process. So, so I've been learning from last year's experience that I actually expect um, quite a bit um, more this year and we actually have met my uh, expectation. Um, I, I'm impressed because, um, and I, I can see that there are more photographers shooting sports. Um, well, talk about, talk about sports um, in this sort of um, climate that I don't, I don't even have any sports um, uh, uh, event to, um, to go and shoot. Um, but that's just remind me of the good old days. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. only about a few months ago. Um, and uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm happy there to see uh, uh, more um, people using Sony camera to, to shoot sports because in my opinion, um, it's really well suited um, to shoot sports. Um, particularly the A9, of course, um, and the A9 Mark II, um, which is uh, fantastic. Um, Andy, and I, I'm just going to I'm just going to ask a favor. Can I get you to um, move your microphone just away from that uh, jack? It's oh, just a sorry. Bit of a, yep, yep, yep. It's a little bit of a rustle there. That's yeah, great. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, yeah, um, like the reason that I actually, as you know, that I converted to the Sony um, about 18 months ago. And mm -hmm. um, I just love the, um, the the portability of of the mm -hmm. mirrorless, and also the sharpness of the lenses as well. So so it shoots very well. Like um, the the silent shutter um, is is a big bonus for us uh, as sports photographer because uh, mm -hmm. at one point in time that I was actually um, stared at by um, by um, um, Roger Federer, and uh, he didn't actually ask me to stop, but. Um, I think what he uh, what he eyes is telling me that um, um, it's enough, guys. You just can you stop shooting until I've actually have served. So that that's that has never happened to me since then. So I think that that's been uh, a, a, a great bonus for uh, having a Sony camera uh, in my bag. Yeah. So yeah. So, uh, 
Why don't we uh, talk about some photos? Um, sure. I, uh, we're, we're going in, in sort of a backwards order here, so we'll have a chat about the, the runners-up and then get on to the, uh, the category winner. Okay. Um, so this, uh, this is uh, Sunrise Bokeh Barrel by Ryan Williams. Uh, what was it about this one that, that spoke to you? Uh, I, I, think, I think the, the title um, says it all, um, Bokeh. It's, it's really something that attracts us here and um, very soft um, mm-hmm. and very nicely um, done. Um, like, I think the, the choice of lens, I think um, it's 85, um, F1.4. Mm. Um, that I know you should at about F4, but still, even at F4, it creates a very nice uh, bokeh here. So, um, mm. and the composition. Like, when I, when I look at um, sports photography, uh, photograph. I mean, there are a few things that I I would fo- uh, uh, pay attention on. The first thing is the storytelling, okay, mm-hmm. and and the emotion um, of the of the subject. Now, of course, I don't see the emotion here because it's actually the face a bit dark. But I think he purposely mm-hmm. um, did it just to just to show not show the um, the actual um, server um, mm-hmm. for for reason. And then the next thing mm-hmm. I look for is composition, which I think with the diagonal online, like, um, the, um, the, um, the shape of the wave actually, um, mm-hmm. is very pleasing. Um, and the technicality, uh, of shooting this, um, and, and you can see that this has to be uh, very early in the morning. I think, um, for, mm-hmm. you should shot like this for very soft light. Um, and also like the, uh, the splash, um, of in the, in the, in the background, uh, I think complete the picture. Yeah, the front, the, the the foreground is the bouquet, and then the um the splash um of the weights um at the at, um the background. Yeah, I know. Um, you know, Stefan was a huge uh, fan of this image. Uh, yeah, the other yeah. judge in the category, and and uh, he's the guy who spent a huge amount of time in the water, uh, taking shots, and uh, you know, I think he was certainly saying. You know, getting this sort of shot at 85, especially, you know, it's a long in the wave stuff is shot wider. Um, and, uh, getting something like this is, is, is really challenging. So, um, he was, he was a big advocate for this image, I think, getting up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The choice of lens is actually, um, very important as well. Yeah. Um, so then taking one back, this is Keon Bullock's, uh, image, uh, far on the horizon. Uh, I, I believe this was one that you, know, you were a big fan of. Yeah, I, I love the um, the color, the intonation of the of the color, the tradition of that. Um, it's very pleasing. Um, it's mm. very, has very sort of calming effect. Even though this is more like um, a quite an extreme sport, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, which I, I I've, I've never shot and I've never done um, skydiving myself. But looking at that, I thought, oh, okay, geez. I mean, I it all all, all these people all joined together. All right, so there's only a short moment in doing that in vertically um, down because you can see the horizon. So um, mm. you can actually cheat on that one because um, mm. there's just right, right at that. And then I can see the reflection um, on um, on the face. I think they all wear helmets. Um, mm. You can see clearly um, the uh, the sports camera there um, attached to the to the helmet, um, yeah. and and it gives you the, the sense of unison, like they are all working together, like as one team forming this, this sort of formation here. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the, and the and the setting sun in the background, yeah. Um, yeah. I think it, it just just uh, and and it follows all the uh, um, the rule of thirds. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. from that composition point of view, I think it's, it, it does all the right thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's been uh, great having sort of Kian as as uh, one of our regular contributors with Alpha Awards. Mm-hmm. You know, he he uh, submits every year and um, uh, took out category i want to say last year um he had a fantastic shot of uh skydivers falling into a crown of clouds um and uh just yeah really uh, really consistent work um uh that's uh yeah always always super impressive and a a real pleasure to see Mm, okay no i'm um okay uh can you hear me all right well because uh if i if i don't yeah if i don't just let me know okay okay sounds good yep um, so then let's take a look at, uh, the top spot, uh, Scott Barber's, uh, horse race. So this is captured during the Melbourne cup, I believe. Mm. And, um, this is our top uh, pick, um, for all the really yeah. good reasons. Mm. Um, now you can see that like, this is the, this is a blurry image. I mean, all sports photographer, uh, would always, 
uh, shoot a blur image uh, among other things mm -hmm. and and it is just like a contrast of uh, sharpness right mm. I, and you can see that um, he um, Scott shot it at um, uh, one eighth of the second mm -hmm. and now I know how difficult it is to shoot at this low speed and hand handheld of course right um, and and you can see the uh, the sharpness uh, of uh, all the horses and the numbers and the and the jockeys and the helmets and things, um, and and it, it's the panning of the uh, of the camera and the lens um, and gives you this sort of uh, um, different color, um, very softness of the color, and I love this white line. You can see that mm. the like the barrier there, and it's mm -hmm. right in the middle. Of the picture mm. so it's like a separation between what's going on on the horse track um and the race track and and also the um the punters uh, behind the um the fence so it's just mm -hmm. like it's just like two images sort of like blended together mm. Right? Mm. And, and 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 it's a spot um picture it, it gives you the sense of motion the excitement which is actually the storytelling i'm talking about the composition mm. And mm -hmm. the technicality because um, holding handheld like this cam this camera at one eighth of a second it takes a lot of practices and things yeah, yeah. so I think this is this is a clear a quite a clear winner um, I think um, Stefan and I I think I remember Stefan wasn't too crushed on about this in the first in the first <laughs> round uh, and then and then uh, we had a, a, a long discussion and uh, he he looked at the the raw file and he also recognized this is actually um, a, a, a fun runner for that yeah yeah. Well, uh, listen, Andy, thanks so much for being part of the judging process and thanks for coming on tonight. I appreciate um, that, yeah. That's all the time we have for sports. So, uh, yeah, have a great night. Okay, same to you and everyone enjoy the evening. Okay, bye. Thanks, Andy. Okay, moving on, our second last category. It's uh, wedding with none other than the amazing James Day and Aries Tao. Hey. Gentlemen. Hello. How's it going? Good. Doing fantastic. Oh, is you showboat. Look at this setup. My goodness. So uh, yeah, Amazing. I was just I did um yeah I did another live session last yesterday. So I thought I'm just going to be to. No, very fishing. very nice. Yeah. Um, I love your bokeh in the background. It's very. Thank shiny. you. Got my little fairy lights twinkling away back there. Um. Gents, uh, what, tell me what were your what were your first thoughts uh, when you uh, looked through the images for wedding this year? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... <laughs> I think we might have a little bit of delay here. Maybe Aries, no feel worries. free to start us off. No, I, I thought you wanted to say something. Um, I just quite you... quite enjoy the variety in the in the submissions. There are lots of. Uh, different sort of styles, right? Um, there are yeah. lots of natural lights capturing the moments. There are, uh, we see this awesome landscape images as well as this very bold way of using lightings. So they are fantastic and it's it's great to, oh, I, I actually quite enjoy the live, uh, the judging session, so. Mm, mm. James? Look, to me, there was, there was a handful of clear winners from, from mm -hmm. the very, very beginning. Um, there was a few like the ones we're seeing obviously now that were in the finalists that jumped out straight away as being, you know, images that were worthy of being in the finalists. Mm -hmm. um, and we were, we were torn. It was, it was, yeah. it was hard to, to pick. Well, maybe uh, why don't we take a have a bit of a chat about them individually? Um, why don't we start with Alex's uh, Alex's shot here? What uh, what grabbed you about this one, James? Look, for me, I obviously, I photograph weddings every single weekend. Well, not at the moment, but um, <laughs> an image like this, it doesn't come about all the time where you can have a couple in a beautiful scene with interesting light. Um, you don't often have the opportunity to capture something like this. So that's why this was, this was one of my faves and one that I wanted to... Um, to see go well from the very beginning. Um, I love just the reality that's playing out. Yet the couple are lost in their own little moment in the middle of it. Um, I think, you know, there's there's a couple of things that maybe let it down, um, but very, very minor things, you know, potentially, um, potentially some post-processing things, 
a few expressions that maybe are a little bit um, distracting, but ultimately this was this was probably one, of, if not my, it was probably my favourite image. So, yeah, I think this it, it was really um, in that in that final stretch. It was between uh, this image and, and the one that did get up for winner, and um, you know it was it was a tough it was a tough rundown on that on that yes. fast last two. Yeah. Um, Aries, any any thoughts on this one? Yeah, I just quite. Um, I think it's a great image because quite often, um, scared of missing the moment, I we as wedding photographers, we try to stick the lens right in front of the face when people were congratulate them, right? Try to capture the emotion. Mm -hmm. And I think the uh, wedding photographer who uh, who did this actually did a great job by stepping back and find an unusual angle, try to capture the whole scene and the. Uh, dynamic range and the tonality is just beautiful you can see the highlights you can see all the shadow details mm. and um yeah it's all there it's almost and uh, the color the color is beautiful it almost mm. reminds me the rembrandt's famous painting like night watch mm. it's, it has this yellowish warm scene actually seals the wedding image very well so mm. well mm, done absolutely um so then uh wen Yan's, uh image here walking on water uh, this is very different to the other other images in in this set. Um, I don't know, Aries. Do you want to talk a little bit about what uh, what stood out about this one? Yeah. Um, so if you look at if you look at a bride's outfit, you can tell the photo shoot was done at a relevantly cold weather. So <laughs> I think the the photographer has done a wonderful job. Tried just press a the couple walking into the into the water and like freaking cold um mm. and it's great control of light to be honest uh, i do i do use lots of lights myself i think it's fantastic quite often the backlit is very risky and because mm -hmm. we we if we're not being careful the um, bright scums as well as the the ground could be easily overexposed to you know mm. pitch white then mm. all of a sudden you know the the groom's suits could lose all the shadow details so it's it's mm. it's very well done however you know this image handles them very well technically it's 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 just image next almost perfect it's just beautiful i love that image mm. yep james any any uh, thoughts from you all I, all i'd add is that this was an image that i don't think i originally picked this one and mm. I think I need a little bit of talking around to, not too much, but a little bit mm -hmm. of talking around. Um, yeah. Definitely was was right up there with, um, you know, the top sort of five or six for me. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoy it. Um, I also, I, I find it hard not to see the, the lighting effect and, and mm -hmm. maybe not a huge moment in that effect, in, in you know, mm -hmm. that's also playing out. Mm -hmm. But I think it's beautifully done, so I'm I'm glad that it that it got up. Yeah, great. I think I think um, it, this is definitely a category where uh, you know talking to you guys during the judging process, you could so clearly see you know you guys both have very different and distinct styles, and the way that you selected images often reflected that as well. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and it made, yeah, that made as it as you'd expect. <laughs> Because we weren't yeah. just agreeing on everything and saying yeah, whatever, whatever. It was like, mm, actually, I, I, I see something different, and that made it like, yeah, it was, it was good fun. Yeah, a bit more challenging. Mm. Um, so then our top spot, uh, "Wild Love" by Benjamin Lane. Um, James, do you want to kind of lead us in on this one? Yeah. So once again, I think Aries helped me fall in love with this image with the way he explained it. So I won't, mm -hmm. I won't take away too much because, you know, it's kind of his to, to share. But mm -hmm. Aerie saw things that I didn't see. And once once my eyes were opened to those, because mm -hmm. um, I, I guess I was, I was quite quickly distracted by um, the water on the lens, if that's what's going on, um, mm -hmm. and the potential of is this Photoshop you know, but but when we're able to see right. the raw file, and we're it was able all to see there. past all of that, um, and as I said, with Aries' explanation, which I'll let, let him do, um, beautiful image. I want I want to be that photographer. I'm so jealous. <laughs> yeah, Aries. 
to me, um, the image's impact is already there. It comes with almost like multiple layers. Uh, the first thing I see is the waterfall flows from the top left to the bottom right corner. And you can see the bright gum actually flows in almost the same pattern to mimic, mm. um, to mm. ha ha create this harmony between this couple and the environment, right? The, you know, the shape of the dress and the shape of the waterfall. And all of a sudden you see the, you know, the water drops bokeh in the foreground. It gives you this cold feeling, right? Lots of time, lots of time, the, like I, I think the foreground bokeh doesn't work, but in this scenario, it does. Instead of make the audience see the thing, it actually invites us, us the audience, to be there with the couple. You can almost feel the wind; it's blowing your face, and the cold water drops on the, you know, on the photographer's lens, right? And mm. I, it's it's waterproof lens, so it's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the foreground actually supports, kind of supports the couple's gesture. Um, you know, mm. the, the groom is holding the bride so tight, use his back to shield the bride from the winter. And you can almost feel that without seeing their face, you can almost feel the raw warmth in their hugs. So overall, to me, it's um, it's my favorite. And uh, I'm just glad in the midst to, uh, in the midst to the winner. Brilliant. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, being part of the process. Uh, and uh, have a great night, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for having us. Nice to see you. Pleasure. See you ya. too. See ya. Bye. Well, now we are down to our very last category, nature, uh, and we're joined by two very talented photographers. We have uh, Craig Parry and Robin Moon. Good evening. G'day, g'day. How you going? Very, very well. How are you? Hi. Hi. Hey, Craig. Hey, Craig. <laughs> Hey, Rob. <laughs> um, well, guys, uh, thank you for coming on stream. Um, uh, I'm just going to quickly reset myself here, but uh, tell me, um, uh, nature this year, uh, strong category, what was your feeling? About as tough as last year, really, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I think I recall we got down to the final 30 and was stumped and, and you were telling us we had to narrow it down even further. And there was dead yeah. silence in the room. <laughs> <laughs> it can. It, it was. It was. It was a heartbreaker. And na nature is always one of our biggest categories, along with landscapes. So, um, the caliber was was absolutely immense. Yeah, and it's good um, to see the result too. Having you know the A nine in the mix, and and also the some of the prime lenses as well, and telephoto. Yeah. But yeah, it was lovely. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to see, um, you know, it's it's exciting mm. when that gear comes out, but it's always, uh, you know, a year or two before you really start seeing it in the record. Um, and it's it's very satisfying when it does turn up. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, well, guys, we're going to sort of run through the uh, the runners up and then head up into the, the winner for uh, for this category. Um, so um, this is uh, one of the runners up. Um, uh, and this was, I think, quite a, a different image to the other stuff that we saw. So uh, Louis Burnett's done done a, a very sort of simplistic image here. Um, I don't know, Craig, do you want to lead us in? You're the underwater guy. Yeah, I mean, just the play on light, it's really difficult um, underwater to try and get something unique and, and, and especially playing with minimal amount of light there. Um, for me, that's what grabbed it is the, the abstract nature of the image. Um, and also having having the manta upside down, and it's very unusual position, um, and it's just a kind of a haunting haunting image for me, and that, that's what it made it really stand out for sure. Robin, um, well, I had to defer to Craig on this one with the light because I wasn't sure whether the light had been added after the photo or not. But uh, it's mm -hmm. beautiful. It's just so soft and so ethereal, and mm -hmm. so simple, just gorgeous and elegant. It was a really interesting one when we saw the raw for this because the you know initial capture is a lot flatter uh, and they've done a, a real uh, a really awesome job without without it looking too worked they've managed to really bring a, a lot out of this image. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, so then, um, Sid, uh, Sid's if you run, you will die. Um, uh, 
brilliant, uh, brilliant image. And um, Sid had a bunch of uh, images actually from, from, I think mostly, if not all from Africa. Um, mm. So yeah, sort of this was the, his image that caught up, but uh, really there, I think we, we must've taken, what was it? Three or four images into yeah. the short list. Yeah. 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 yeah, definitely. I had this one pegged as my favorite for a long, long time. I just, Every time I looked at it I, and I read the story that went with it, which complemented mm -hmm. the picture, I just mm -hmm. kept on coming back to those eyes, you know, and then I'd put it aside and move on to something else and try and be subjective and then I would just come straight back to that face and that eyes and what they mm -hmm. were thinking, you know, that having to stand stock still while you have that ferocious face on you. I also, the um, you know, the dirt kicking up behind the line as well, you know, I felt just added that extra layer of, um, you know, he's obviously pouring the ground and charging them and and it just added for me that it, you can pull it in and you can see the very fine dirt in the in the air as well and um that just added an extra layer of complexity for it for me mm. but it was all about the story in that face really yeah it's yeah. Ho horrific <laughs> <laughs> fabulously horrific <laughs> Craig? No, for, for me, exactly. Like, I think it's the feeling that draws me to the image. Um, and, and also that the, the, the eye contact is super important um, when you're working with nature and get, having a portrait like that. And knowing that this guy was on foot, um, you know, that's, mm. that sort of adds an element of danger. And uh, I, can, I, I can sort of relate to the, the photographer as well. You know, when I jump in the water and shoot shark or whatever, that... It takes, mm -hmm. you know, you really, you really got to step up to the plate, and um, and it's very difficult to really focus and capture that shot. So he's done really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a quick chat with, uh, with uh, Sid after uh, we notified him, uh, and uh, and he he was saying he was really just blow our own horn here for a second, but he was really happy with using the A nine. Uh, this one was on the the A nine and uh, the one hundred to four hundred, and he was saying. You know, he just had a split second to capture it and, and it, it tracked the line beautifully coming in, even under pressure. So it's always good to see the gear doing its work out there. Oh, just that, that 100 to 400, it just never puts a foot wrong, really. It's just is the most fabulous, fabulous lens. Mm. It's really well liked. Uh, you can yeah. see why. So then um, moving on to our winner, um, yeah. another one on the A9, um, a red-billed gull taking a bath. Mm. Um, Craig, do you want to lead us in on this one? Yeah, um, as a nature photographer, I know how hard it is to get that spontaneous moment, like moments like this, um, to be able to compose yourself and, and have your focus correct and, you know, and, and also this image also, also takes anticipation. So you've got to anticipate the moment as, and predict it and that's uh, a skill that um, you learn over time and, you um, this particular photographer has done really well in anticipating this moment and, you know, setting focus because obviously the gulls dive, dove down into the water and, um, you know, and there's a, there's a rock behind it. So the camera's got to work really fast too in locating it. And it's just everything about it is, you know, it makes you look deep. As you look deeper and deeper, you can see the head of the, the gull in the water and it just, um, yeah, mm -hmm. for, me, for me, it's that split second of, of uh, magic. Love yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. Robin? The um, I I just loved the um, you know, under the layer of the water, you know, it, as if the water wasn't clear and crispy enough over his face. You had each of the you know each of the details perfect. You know, the two eyes and mm. the beak. You could actually mm. see it, but you had to stop and see it. And when I, I I showed this photo to a few other people when it came out, and they passed over it, and it wasn't until they stopped and just looked in that you know you just looked deeper and deeper and deeper into the into the photo mm. to see the amazing. Mm -hmm. detail in the centre there and I think when we looked at the raw as well it was it was only quite a small crop as well you know it's a tiny piece of the actual photo so he's really nailed the focus you know beautifully yeah, yeah absolutely yeah it's it's probably a quarter of the full frame um, yeah and uh, it's yeah. still looking pretty crisp so mm -hmm. yeah fabulous impressive. it's a fabulous shot mm -hmm. uh, any others that you guys wanted to shout out before we before we wrap up Oh, jeez! On the spot, show us some pickies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, let me let me uh, let me throw something up here. Make it too hard. Yeah. Um, we could go uh, all night now. Da, da, da. Well, let's let's uh, we we've got we've got two minutes to fill, so make oh, it your favorite. Okay. Oh, let's go the little hummingbird in the top left. He corner. is amazing, isn't he? Yeah, we yeah. loved him for a long, long time. 
Yeah. Absolutely loved him. It was amazing. And that's about one-eighth of the picture. I think he's done a huge crop on that. It was a, it was a stupendous crop. Absolutely yeah. fabulous crop and absolutely beautifully taken. But when we pulled it in, his editing just let him down just a tiny bit. There was a fair little bit of haloing across the yeah. tails and mm. um, a little bit of colour bleed. And that was, you know, that's being really harsh. But by that stage, we had <laughs> we had to be really harsh. It was a very tight field at that point, <laughs> yeah, wasn't it? But yeah. boy, what a cracking shot. Yeah, yeah. But it is yeah. for, for me. Um, it's just seen uh, people the, the, the competition develop and become much more competitive, and and the standard each year getting higher and higher and higher. It's really encouraging to see. Um, you know, I'm I'm seeing this as one of Australia's you know top photography competitions now, and you know, it, and, and for the, the volume of images coming in is just shows you how much how, yeah. how many people are using the Sony equipment now and trust it and. Yeah use it as yeah as their gear as a professional and amateurs so yeah, it's, it's encouraging to so. say it's yeah it's definitely uh it's heartening for us as well so yeah. um well look guys thank you for your time judging thank you for your time here tonight pleasure, pleasure Sean. thank you mate yeah. great and thanks uh, for having we'll us see you again thanks for having Excellent. us on to judge again this year it was great our yeah. pleasure of course always mm-hmm. all right well, have Lovely. a good night, guys. Okay. You too. See you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. Um, well, listen, thank you, everyone who's uh, stuck around, you brave brave few. Uh, it's late and we're going to wrap it up. Um, but, look, thanks for tuning in and, and thank you to everyone who uh, entered and was part of the process. Don't forget uh, our People's Choice Awards are uh, are up now. Um, so hop on, uh, vote by liking the ones that you like and uh, and also uh, comment for your chance to get some nice Sony swag, uh, some headphones and, and speaker and whatnot. Um, that's it from me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, that's the end of our stream. Have a great night and uh, we'll hope to see you re- real soon. Good night. <laughs>